Welcome to my channel, Let's Summarize It. My name is Hussam al -Daman, and today we're going to talk about how artificial intelligence, AI, is used in higher education. This is based on an article that was published in EdTech. The title of the article, Successful AI Examples in Higher Education That Can Inspire Our Future. The interesting thing is that this was published two months prior to the pandemic, January 2020. It started by giving us three distinct examples. The first example was from Georgia Tech in the United States. Now this is where an AI master's level class was taught by a professor who usually gets 300 students per semester in that class. Those students would post close to 10,000 messages on a discussion forum, which is monitored by several teaching assistants. He wanted to put AI into action, so he worked with his team to prepare an artificial intelligence that actually focuses on those questions. The interesting thing is that he said, even if student numbers increase in the class, questions tend to be repeated. The questions tend to look alike. So he created what's known as Jill Watson which is an artificial intelligence system which was supposed to mimic a human being. They provided Jill with thousands and thousands of questions and their answers from prior semesters. The interesting thing is that students were not aware that Jill was not a real person. They thought that they were interacting with one of the new TA's teaching assistants. At the beginning, there were many issues according to the article. Several problems. Mainly because AI systems are rule-based. Sometimes context is not taken into account. So a question might be about a specific day, which the system knows, but if the student says something about weekend, the system doesn't know what a weekend is. So it provides the students with sometimes embarrassing answers. So what they wanted to do at the beginning was to create a mirror forum so that students would actually ask on the official forum. Information from there is shifted to this mirror forum where Jill starts to answer. And then the TAs would monitor the mirror forum and then they try to provide assistance to Jill so that Jill starts learning. With time, Jill became one of the most effective TAs. She answered questions with 97% success rate. She answered them immediately, 24-7. She was so quick that the team had to actually put a time delay on the answer so that students don't get suspicious. However, as per the article, Jill and other artificial intelligence systems provide answers to frequently asked questions, repeated questions. However, they cannot motivate students, nor can they help them with specific step-by-step -step situations in their homework or coursework. But what Jill and others like Jill were able to do was to free the human beings, the other TAs, so that they can actually provide more face-to-face -face or more human contact assistance to the students. Ashok Gol, the professor that developed this, provided a very interesting talk on TED Talk. I'm going to provide that link in the description so that you can actually take a look and get some more information. The second example was also from Georgia, but this time it's from Georgia State. Now this is where the university faced a problem where students would actually enroll in the spring so that they can actually begin classes in the fall. So we're talking high, sc high school students that apply to the university in the spring, they're accepted, but they can only begin in the fall. So between the time they're accepted and the time they begin, some of them that just don't show up. This is known as a summer melt, where students change their mind for reasons that became very clear to the university later on. So what the university wanted to do was it wanted 
to provide information to those students, to talk to them in a way that they understand. It developed a chatbot to provide online conversation with those students. Now a chatbot is a software used for this kind of conversation. It could be text to text or text to speech and they often mimic live human agents. Examples of chatbots are available all over the place. For example, the World Health Organization provides something called Health Alert. Kia, the car maker, provides something called Kian that provides also answers to people that have questions about the cars. The university partnered with an education technology company that specializes in something known as conversational AI technology. And they produce a system called Pounce. Pounce communicated with students via smart text messages. And many of the queries that were coming in revolved around the following. Placement exams, class registration, financial aid applications. These are uh, pieces of information that students were unable to find. So sometimes, because they cannot get that information, they lose interest. The interesting thing is that in that summer of 2016, when the university implemented the system, the dropout rate stopped or dropped by 22%. The melt in the summer was reduced by that amount. The third example that was provided in the paper is a collaboration between IBM and RPI. Now, this is where they started to say that uh, AI could help in personalizing students' experience. At some point, they believe that AI will have the ability to read the expressions of students behind the screen so that they can see if they understand or don't understand a particular lesson. In terms of this collaboration, the focus was on teaching students a difficult language, Mandarin, Chinese. So they wanted to, pr to produce something that was very special. So they got together and they uh, produced something called Cognitive Immersive Room. Now this is where students can actually have a real life experience through AI and they can enter a room that can actually look like a Chinese restaurant, a Chinese garden, a Chinese market, and then they can actually ask questions and interact with these people that of course are not real. What we know so far is that AI works very well with rule-based subjects because it follows a decision tree. If you want to find out more about this partnership between RPI and IBM, I have left you a link that provides more information about this. Before I leave you, I would like to ask you to take a look at the following. What do you think about artificial intelligence replacing Dr. Husim? If you agree, then the channel will become, let AI summarize it. That would be funny Dr. Husim. What do you think? Do you agree? Before we leave, let me give you my opinion and let's hear yours. My take on AI is very simple. I think it's here to stay and it's going to evolve. If we like it or if we don't like it, it's here to stay. However, what we need to do is we need to actually begin the conversation within higher education, not with corporations that are specializing in these items. We need to explain to them exactly what we need so that they can actually help us in filling in these gaps. And at the end of the day, these are systems that are supposed to free up human elements, professors, TAs, counselors, so that they can provide the more important counseling and information to students. Because it's through that cognitive interaction that students learn.